Welcome once again. Let's talk about politics and governance. And let's talk about how crises have polarized politics through social media in South America. I have invited Isabella Gonçalves to talk about her research. Because Isabella and her colleagues analyzed Facebook posts from recent elections in Brazil, Colombia, Chile, and Peru, and found that divisive topics provoke strong reactions with more negative responses in, well, highly polarized countries. We're going to jump into that right away. Isabella, welcome to our episode. Thank you very much for having me. So, Isabel, you emphasize in the article that Latin America is underexplored in political communi communication research, despite high levels of violence, political crisis, ideological polarization, and that there's a need to study emotional reactions to divisive issues on social media, particularly in these presidential systems. So tell us more about that. What uh, made you start this research? Well, I think that user engagements in general, they are very important for researching on because basically they are the metrics uh, nowadays of what it, what matters exactly. So basically user engagement will tell if a post will be viral or, viral or not. Mm -hmm. So we begin with that. Mm -hmm. But most research on user engagement in Facebook, they are dealing mostly with comments, share and likes, and there, there are not so many, much research about the other reactions of Facebook, such as uh, sad, whoa, ha, 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 angry and loving reactions. So we depart on it, uh, uh, on the, the loving, the angry reactions as, let's say, the dependent variables. And what is new about our research is that we are focusing for that in a region that is still understudied. So Latin American general for political communication research is under-searched uh, region. And uh, when we explore those dependent variables, so anger and love reactions, it's still new. So I think that we are one of the first studies that are exploring this dependent variable in this region. So most of the studies dealing with it, it are in Western regions, such as in Europe or in the US. So we, we can expand this research and then help the, the scholarship to generalize the findings on it. Perfect. So new region, innovative research and an innovative look. So let us know about what you found. So the most important findings of your study. Well, first, we, I have to think uh, talk about uh, the hypothesis. So we were thinking that uh, anger and love reactions would be more, uh, would uh, be higher in countries that are more polarized. And for that, we used uh, an index. So Brazil in this index was the most polarized country and the thought that the, the, those reactions would, would be higher there, but this was not the case. Uh, what we found was actually that there were other variables at play that would explain more those uh, polarizing reactions. Namely would be, let's say the share of votes. So usually uh, pa political parties that receive more, more vote shares, they would receive more love reactions. and. Uh, uh, also, the issue, uh, crime uh, uh, posts with uh, crime issues would also receive more angry reactions and not posts about corruption, for instance. So uh, we also examined divisive issues as independent variables. And this, uh, in case of uh, crime, this was uh, something that we, we showed uh, specifically in Brazil. Posts with crime, they would be more likely to, to receive anger reactions compared to other countries, for instance. And another thing that is also interesting is about the strategy of the campaigning. So let's say uh, we have usually two types of strategies, the acclaim and the negative campaigning. Basically, acclaim campaign is when a candidate talks positively about himself. And negative campaign is actually the attacking campaign. And what we found was that, let's say, negative campaigning would be associated with anger reactions, whereas uh, positive uh, positive campaigning would be also associated with the law of reactions. So this was also an interesting finding. Uh, well, I assume that understanding these social media reactions, some of them will uh, not expect it can help political actors maybe tailor their messages to manage this polarization better. So what practical consequences of these findings can you see? So who can learn from this and what can they learn? Well, as you told, uh, political strategies, of course, can learn from that and uh, better direct their messages. 
But I think that we can also talk about the negativity in online platforms. I think that's the most takeaway home message, because if we think about, let's say, that negative uh, campaigning is receiving more angry reaction, that's also worrying. Because when you talk about the algorithm of Facebook, anger reactions are more likely to spread compared to other reactions. So actually, they they receive, receive more weight uh, when they th there is this algorithm. Uh, they they usually they are more they, when you compare, let's say, anger reactions with like or ha 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 or other reactions. Anger reactions are spreading more. And this is a bit worrying because what we see nowadays is, let's say, that the the quality of the political debate is is diminishing. Is and uh, this is worrying, of course, because we have a uh, worldwide uh, a decline in trust in institutions, political institu institutions, for instance. And in general, this is also part of the, the the negativity that is increasing, and also the focus on divisiveness. So. Uh, contentious issues such as uh, education or health and so on, they are not receiving so much attention in social media platforms and uh, by political strategies as well. And this is uh, worrying, for instance, uh, when we talk about uh, the quality of democracy in different uh, in, in different uh, contexts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little worrying. Uh, you mentioned the, well, some innovative elements of your research, the some of them uh, first studied. So tell us more about future research. So how can future research follow up on this article? Well, I think that we can focus on other countries as well. Because mm -hmm. for instance, we explored the two divisive issues in our research, which were crime and corruption, which are two divisive issues in Latin America. But when we talk about other kind of a context, for instance, Europe, migration would be considered a division topic, for instance. And the, those kind of division issues, they change depending on the context. So a follow-up study would be exploring what kind of divisive issues in each context uh, receive what kind of reactions. That would be one possible ways of follow-up on that. And also uh, the evolution of uh, negativity and acclaim messages as well in longitudinal studies, because our study was, for instance, uh, focused on the last elections in each of the countries analyzed. And this is, of course, uh, uh, something that we can we have to follow up on. So is negativity increasing? Is a claim message decreasing, for instance, that would be a possible way to investigate it further? And also, are the topics changing? Because uh, uh, in this in this particular study, we, we, we focused on crime and corruption, but maybe in the future, the topics also change depending on the context as well. Well, still a lot to, to research uh, in the future. Um, you mentioned that some of the findings, uh, you mentioned the Brazil, Brazilian case, for example, uh, it went against well what you expected or uh, in general what you expected. So what are your reflections uh, on this? Is there anything in particular that for you or for the other authors that jumped on you after looking at the data? Yes, as I told you, we were thinking that Brazil would be more, we would receive more polarizing reactions because it is the most polarized country. Mm -hmm. But one thing that could be explaining these results is that the polarizing reaction is not exactly a measure of polarization. We were thinking of it, we were making this assumption. But of course, that one limitation of these studies, what does it mean? Anger and love reactions in the context uh, in the context of Facebook because they don't really mean emotional reaction, and I think that one possible follow up would be actually exploring the emotions of the person that uh, of of the individuals that are being exposed to the to this message, and I think that this is a very interesting discussion. I've I've read a lot of literature about it. Uh, we don't really know what those reaction points mean in, in Facebook, what they, they are exactly, if they would represent emotional or not. And this is one thing that we have to follow up on, I think. Perfect. Uh, this has been a very good straight to the point episode, but there's a challenge I would like to, um, to ask you that I ask all my speakers. So if you had to sum up this whole episode in no more than two, two sentences, anything you want our audience to remember about the talk, what would it be? Well, I think that uh, we have to think about the uh, user reactions and about uh, the kind of messages that politicians are spreading online. And I think that uh, when we look at this 
studies, it is exactly that. We we show uh, how different uh, how different uh, variables are taking a role in in uh, emotional reactions. That is love and anger reaction. But this is deeper in the end because uh, I think that uh, when we in examine that, actually, we are looking deeply on negativity, and this is, I think, the the, the thing that uh, I most strive for me: uh, the evolution of uh, divisiveness and also negativity in different contexts. Mm -hmm. Isabella, thank you very much. Thank you very much. For all of those who are watching us on YouTube, in the description of this video, you can find all the materials of this conversation that Isabel and I were just talking about. Uh, you have a link to our Let's Talk About Politics and Governance website, to our Twitter account, uh, to our newsletter, to our podcast platform. So I invite you all to take a look at it.